Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Dramatage Piper. Today, we're going to enjoy some of Cobblestone Hiking Lake, which I already know I love. The only reason I happen to have this tin to show you is I just opened this yesterday and haven't transferred it to its jar. So I'll give you that little bit of delight. Uh, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You getting excited? I know you are. I already opened that tin. Well, actually, I didn't open it. Being 316 is, does his mighty man open. He's perfect at it, but uh, I have my man Jeeves open all my tins. And we are smoking it in the pipe of the moment, which is a Peterson Darwin, which many of you know has now become the B42. The lighter for today is by Chief. See that look at that oh yeah oh, so sexy Some presenters of these videos, I've seen debate whether or not you should already have your pipe lit. And I say no to pipe video. We want the full Monty, don't we? Yeah, you know you do. Don't be shy. Mm. The Hiking Flake is in the Outdoor Series, <clears throat> go figure, of the Cobblestone Brands. And it's made by Cole House and Cop for them. One of four blends. Just something here, please. Yeah. It's just a fantastic burly flake. I love burly anyway. <clears throat> But when I tried this originally, which was shortly after it was introduced, I really fell for it.
unfortunately, <clears throat> lots of people fell for it. Because they're selling a lot of it. So it does go out of stock quite a bit, but it comes back to selling stuff. Thus far, it's not become one of those, oh my gosh, I can't get that. Much as I uh, have a passion for my pipes and my tobacco and all accessories therein, pipe tobacco was not my first tobacco love. That would be cigars. I smoked my first cigar when I was eight years old. So far too young, don't do that, don't attempt it under any circumstances. No, no, no. Bad, bad boy. But it was a King Edward Perfecto. While my contemporaries were always stealing, or shall I say, liberating their parents' cigarettes. I had no interest in cigarettes. But I managed to score a five pack of King Edward Perfectos, which was not that difficult in those days because, frankly, there wasn't. <coughs> There weren't age limits anyway at that particular moment. And you could say you're buying it for your dad, your grandpa, whoever. And the town general store would just... And when I say general store, for those that may not know, that's just a little tiny independently owned store that has a bunch of different stuff. I'm talking about today's Dollar General store. Now you may think that I smoked that cigar buried at the far end of the backyard in a corner on a bench. overlooked a very large yard that owned, was owned by a neighbor, actually a few houses down. Their yard was insanely huge. They had been prosperous at, at one point and were still floating on the fumes of their granddaddy's well. And it was well uh, concealed, so we would go down there to do our misdeeds, our covert actions. That cigar did not make me sick, by the way. I enjoyed every puff of it, and I smoked the whole thing. it could be asked well how did you get away with this I didn't like a fool or a child whichever I foolish child yeah foolish child I had uh, smoked another one and I had three left in the pack and I put the pack in 
my underwear drawer, as one does when you're a young lad smoking cigars, and my mother found them. Of course, that makes sense, doesn't it? When you're eight, mom washes your laundry. So she's going to go into the uh, underwear drawer to put things away. How stupid was that? But my mom, <clears throat> Dragon, was always cool as a cucumber. She didn't get rattled. She didn't lose her cool. She was always very calm. She asked me about them. I found these in your uh, drawer. What's going on? And I said, what was pretty much the truth? With one exception. I said that I got them to do my impersonations of George Burns. Which is true. I did an impersonation of George Burns. I was known for being a little comedian. And I had great admiration for all the great comics, which is a part of the inspiration probably for smoking cigars because they were individuals. And I identified the cigar with individuality at that time. So George Burns, Milton Berle, Ernie Kovacs, Alan King, and of course the immortal Groucho Marx. And she said, well, that makes sense. I, I, I can see that. But uh, I think you'd be better off if you used bubblegum cigars. We got more mail here. It wouldn't be a day with me and a smoke. We didn't go to the post office now, would it? I'm going to pull off to the side because I need to light my pipe. So she says you can use bubblegum cigars, which I, of course, said, oh, okay, yeah, well, no, that would be no fun. Now, just so you know, I didn't continue uh, smoking cigars in my childhood. That, that stuff was revisited in my teen years, although I did experiment with a pipe. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Play amongst yourselves. I said amongst yourselves. I hope you got that. Of course, you can do whatever you want. It's your business.
Better watch out here, I'll get uh, rear-ended by a local. If you're a Burley fan, you'll love this. If you're a Flake fan, you'll love this. As far as its taste, body, I put it right between McBaron HH Burley Flake and uh, Salani Burley Flake. But this isn't a review, you know, I don't do reviews, so. I'm just pointing it out to you that I like it. I don't want to get off here yet until I extend my sincerest appreciation to two people. The Gentleman Scholar and Curmudgeon Piper, both of whom did shout outs about me on their channels. I recommended that people check me out. I appreciate that more than I can possibly say, but I'll say it anyway. I appreciate it very much, and to everybody who has checked out the channel, has subscribed, I thank you as well. All are welcome. Until next time, if there is a next time.